so today this is lecture 7 we will discuss one important concept of control systems linear control systems that is the transfer function of linear time invariant systems so this is one effective modeling technique for describing linear time invariant system and this is actually the relation between input and output variables when you consider a linear time invariant system then it has that input and output variables the transfer function represents the relation between input and output variables there are some restrictions of this modeling technique that means whenever we represent a system via transfer function we consider that its initial conditions are zero and this technique is only applicable for linear time invariant system and it is applicable to both single input as well as single output single input single output system and multi input multi output system so in case of multi input multi output system we say this is transfer function matrix because the number of inputs and number of outputs is more than one so let us see what are the different attributes and important characteristics of transfer function based modeling technique so this is one this is the relation relation between input output variable and it is applicable only for linear time invariant system that is LTI system when that input is unit impulse then we can characterize an LTI system by its output response that is an LTI system an LTI system can be characterized can be characterized by its output by its output response when the input is unit impulse so means means if you apply an in a, a unit impulse input to that system you will get that response and an LTI systems can be characterized <coughs> by its output response when the input is unit impulse and as you know unit impulse input that means if you take Laplace transform then it is one so input is unit impulse so that is delta t equal to one so you should not be confused here that means you may think that uh, transfer function modeling is only 
associated with the unit impulse. It is not. You can apply any input and you can represent uh, the output as a product of the Laplace transform into the Laplace transform of that input. But whenever we will characterize what LTI system, the input that we consider that is impulse, unit impulse, later we will see in detail. That means the output if you take the Laplace transform of the output when input is unit impulse, then it gives you the transfer function of that LTI system. That thing we will see later. So once the impulse response of a linear system is known, the output of the system YT with any input UT can be found by using the transfer function that just now I have pointed out that is once once the impulse response once the impulse response of a of a linear system is known. That means if you have a linear system, linear time invariant system, and apply that unit impulse to that linear time invariant system, then you will be getting that output response. So whenever you know the output response of the system corresponding to that unit impulse, then the output the output of the system, the output of the system that is YT with any input UT with any input UT can be found by using the transfer function. So it implies that means if you know the output of one LTI system corresponding to the unit impulse input, then for any other inputs, you can easily find out what would be the output of that system just by using the transfer function modeling technique. So then let us define what is transfer function. So transfer function is the Laplace transform transfer function is the Laplace transform is the is the Laplace transform of the of the impulse response of an LTI system with zero initial condition. That is very important with zero initial condition. So this is one of the disadvantages of using transfer function modeling. Because in case of transfer function modeling, you cannot capture the information related to the zero related to the initial conditions of that system. Because you consider the all initial conditions are zero, system is initially relaxed, then only you can model transfer functions. And here you can see the transfer function is the Laplace transform 
of the impulse response of an LTI system. That means whenever you apply unit impulse to an LTI system, you will get some output. Then if you take the Laplace transform of that output, so basically you will get the transfer function. So here mathematically you can write that GS, GS is called the transfer function. So this is the Laplace transform of YT by Laplace transform of UT. So that means this is YS by US. So that means here, suppose you have a system, you have a system here that is input, the Laplace transform of input is US and the output of that system is YS. So here you can see that YS, YS is equal to GS into US. So in case of CISO system, so in case of in case of CISO system, in case of single input, single output system, you can write it as the ratio of Ys by Us, but this thing is not applicable in case of MIMO system. So for MIMO, that means this particular representation is also applicable for single input, single output system. So that is output variable, output variable Ys is equal to Gs into Us. And here you should be careful whenever you will be writing that system dynamics in transfer function modeling framework, then you should write Ys equal to Gs into Us, not, not Us into Gs. So the reason is, you know, in the matrix algebra, you know that a b is not equal to b a in matrix algebra you know that a b here you know that a b not equal to b a from matrix algebra a b not equal to b a and you can see here this u s is a vector because if it is a multi input multi output system suppose us is a vector that is you it has suppose two inputs u1 and u2 and gs is a transfer function matrix and if ys equal to y1 y2 say 2 cross 1 then what is the dimension of gs the dimension of gs is G11, G12, G21, G22. So its dimension is 2 cross 2. So this GS is a transfer function matrix. And whenever you represent a dynamical system in transfer function framework, then if you write YS equal to GS into US, then this matrix multiplication holds. But if you write, if you write US, if you write US into GS, in this case here you can see, in this case GS into YA, so this particular matrix multiplication does not hold. So that's why whenever you write the transfer function, uh, whenever you represent a dynamical system in transfer function framework, you should be careful about the dimension of the transfer function as well as input output variables. So this is 
the transfer function some important features so i'll be again representing uh, some important features of the transfer function it is actually one unitless quantity and uh, it is only applicable that means it is only applicable for lti systems so that means only for LTI system, that means only linear time invariant systems can be modeled using transfer function method. And as I have pointed out, this particular thing is very <clears throat> important in case of transfer function modeling. That means we always assume that the system is initially relaxed. So if you represent a system in transfer by transfer function, it does not give you any information regarding the initial condition. That is one of the major disadvantages of transfer function modeling. But in other way, you can see that this particular modeling technique is very easy as this particular description, this particular description is in algebraic form. So that means you can do all sorts of algebraic operations between input and output that I will be discussing in detail today. And another important thing is it is independent of input of that system. Independent of independent of input of the system what does it mean so someone can say that okay i have one dynamical system here now suppose i apply input u1 and i will get output y1 then again if i apply input u2 we'll be getting output y2 similarly you can apply different different inputs and you'll be getting different different outputs now so in all cases would you get different different transfer functions the answer is no the reason is here you can see if you see the definition the definition says that it is a laplace transform of the impulse response of an lgi system so impulse response of an lgi system means here if you apply unit impulse if you apply unit impulse here unit impulse If you apply unit impulse, you will be getting some output. And if you take the Laplace transform of that output, it gives you the transfer function of that system. So in first case, what will you get? Say Y1S, that means whenever you have applied U1, so Y1S is equal to that GS. GS is actually the transfer function of that LTI system into u1s and here you can see that y2s is equal to gs into u2s so whatever be the input you apply to that system so all the time you can see that the transfer function of that system remains same because you are not changing any dynamics of that system and transfer function actually represents the dynamics of that system so whatever be the input you apply to that system lti system you will be getting different different outputs but the modeling that means that gs remains same so it is independent of that input of that system independent of input of the system and the transfer function that is gs gs so 
this is actually a function of complex variable it is it is a function it is a function of a complex variable s so in bracket we can say that it is very important that not function of not function of real variable or time you should remember this thing that means this laplace transform is a function of complex variable it is not the function of any real variable or time so these are that important features of transfer function so let us just summarize what we have discussed now that means for any lti system linear time invariant system if you wish to model the dynamics of that system we can use transfer function modeling and what is transfer function the transfer function is the laplace transform of the impulse response of an lti system so this is actually the definition of transfer function sometimes someone says that it is actually the ratio of the laplace transform of that output variable and the laplace transforms of the input variable but this particular definition is not correct because you can see here the ratio of output variable by ratio of input variable it only holds in case of ciso system single input single output as i have pointed out that means transfer function is also applicable for multi input multi output system so that means the general definition is this is the laplace transform of the impulse response of an lti system with all zero initial condition that means if you consider some non zero initial condition you cannot have the transfer function modeling and it is a function of complex variable s and it is independent of input that means you should not be confused with that one if you think that whenever you will be changing inputs then every time you will be getting different types of transfer functions but it is not the reason is the system dynamics remain same and if you represent the transfer function in this algebraic form that is y1s equal to gs into u1s and y2s gs into u2s that means this gs basically gives you the relationship between the input variable and the output variable and it is in laplace domain so let us uh, take one example so whenever you have one dynamical systems says we have already discussed these dynamical systems in last class so this is twice zeta omega n so this is that standard second order systems then to find the uh, laplace uh, to uh, find the transfer function of that system uh will be uh, taking laplace transform but before that let us define what is ut and what is yt so input is ut and output is yt so now if we take laplace transform taking laplace taking laplace transform what we get here we will be getting a square ys now twice zeta omega n s ys 
then omega n square y s and here you get omega n square u s so keep it in mind that all initial conditions all initial conditions are zero as our objective is to find transfer function that's why we need to assume that all initial conditions are zero here you can see the definition that all initial conditions should be zero that means y zero then the first derivative of y at zero all are zeros so then this one is in algebraic form that is actually the advantage of laplace transform already we have discussed so now you can represent it in output by ys by us in that particular form so ys by us this one becomes if you take common from here so that is ys by us that becomes omega n square divided by s square plus twice zeta omega n s plus omega n square so this is a standard second order system i'll be discussing just now what is order and uh, polynomials uh, of characteristic equations etc and here you can see that whenever a dynamical system is given like that it is described in ordinary differential equation form then we can find the transfer function of that system so that means if you would like to represent that system this particular dynamical systems in transfer function form so this is actually the model of this particular system in transfer function form so what is the difference with this particular form and this particular form so in this case in the transfer function form you can see we cannot capture the initial conditions of that system but in case of differential equation whenever you will be solving the solution you need the information or information of initial conditions and in this particular representation you can capture the information of initial conditions but in case of transfer function you are losing that information so this is one simple example of transfer function so let us uh, write a transfer function in uh, standard form so let let gs so now you can see that transfer function is actually the ratio of it is actually a rational functions so rational functions that means we can write that a same so here s is that laplace variable and all b a and b minus 1 so these all are coefficients and they are real so this is in numerator and in the denominator we have another polynomial so here you should note down that all bi and ai these all are real coefficients so this is a standard transfer function representation in polynomial forms and here you can see that it is a rational transfer functions that means In the numerator and denominator you have two polynomials with real coefficients and just now what you have seen the transfer function is actually the ratio of the output variable the laplace transform of that output variable and laplace transform of that input variable so this thing can be represented in general form like this and here we have seen that this is the transfer function model of this particular dynamical system this particular dynamical system and 
if you compare this particular polynomial with this particular transfer function so in the numerator polynomial basically you have omega n square that means that your b0 is omega n square and uh, in the denominator you have a square so n equal to so n equal to 2 and twice zeta omega n is equal to say a n minus 1 that is s and omega n square equal to a0 so these are the uh, two polynomials in the numerator and denominator and here we will be giving you some definition so what is proper or biproper transfer function what is proper or biproper transfer function proper or biproper so transfer function i am using that abbreviation tf proper or biproper transfer function whenever m equal to n so here you can see that m is here the degree of the numerator polynomial and n is the maximum degree of that is degree of the denominator polynomial whenever the degree of numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial they are same then we say that it is proper transfer function for example you can see here say gs equal to say suppose a square plus 2s plus 3 and here you can say that it is suppose 5 a square plus s plus 6 so in this case you can see the numerator polynomial its degree is 2 and the denominator polynomial its degree is 2 so that means m equal to n so this is actually one example of proper or biproper transfer function now what is improper transfer function improper transfer function whenever m greater than n that means degree of numerator polynomial is greater than degree of numerator polynomial is greater than degree of denominator polynomial say so for example we can take here that gs equal to suppose s plus 1 so s plus 1 means we can say that this is s plus 1 by 1 so in case of this particular example the degree of numerator polynomial is 1 that is m and degree of denominator polynomial is 0 s to the power 0 so this is n that means 1 greater than 0 so that's why it is improper transfer function so one important point and that is very very important that improper transfer functions are not physically realizable physically not realizable this is very very important that means whenever you consider that a transfer function in improper form that means its numerator degree is greater than denominator degree that transfer function cannot be realized physically so that means in engineering in control systems whatever transfer function you will be taking you take either proper improper or strictly proper that i am going to define now so you should not go with improper transfer function because physically it is not realizable so strictly proper transfer function whenever m less than n that means numerator degree is less than denominator degree so suppose for example you take say this is s plus 1 divided by this is s square plus 2s plus 3 so then you can see here the numerator degree is 1 here numerator degree and denominator degree is 2 so so here you have 2 and this is 1 so that's why this is one example of strictly proper transfer function so that means the transfer function whenever you will be taking it is actually the ratio of two polynomials numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial and depending on the degree of the numerator and denominator polynomial we can classify transfer functions in 
three different classes that is uh, one two and three so that is uh, the proper transfer function improper transfer function and strictly proper transfer function so then let us see what is characteristic equation and what is degree order of the system characteristics this is very important term we will be using throughout this course characteristic equation what is characteristic equation characteristic equation of a linear system is defined as the equation obtained by setting the denominator polynomial of the transfer function to zero so that is characteristic equation in abbreviated form i am writing ch characteristic equation of a linear system of a linear system is defined is defined as the equation obtained the equation equation obtained by setting the denominator polynomial of the transfer function to zero what is that so if you have a transfer function gs that is this is the numerator and this is the denominator so if you make this denominator is equal to zero so then this particular equation is called the characteristic equation so characteristic equation of a linear system is defined as the equation obtained by setting the denominator polynomial of the transfer function to zero so that means here you have that s so denominator polynomial is s n a n minus 1 s n minus 1 a 1 s plus a 0 equal to 0 so this is actually the characteristic equation so now two things are important in this case so whenever you have that characteristic equation so it has some roots so it has some roots and what is the degree of that what is the degree of characteristic equation? So degree of characteristic equation is this one, this n. This is the degree of the characteristic equation. And it is very important that the roots of this characteristic equation actually say about the stability of that system as we have discussed in the introductory classes that means whenever you will be considering dynamical systems the primary requirement is the system should be stable so now the question is how do you know the system is stable or not so the roots of the characteristic equation tell you whether the system is stable or not if the roots of the characteristic equation lie in the left up of the complex plane. That means if you have the complex plane 
So this is that complex plane that is sigma and that is j omega. So if the root lies in the open left half of that complex plane, if the roots lies in this particular region, then the system is stable. That thing we'll be discussing in detail later. So that means what is characteristic equation? So whenever you have a transfer function, whenever you have a transfer function, you just write the denominator polynomial is equal to zero denominator polynomial is equal to zero then you find the roots of that polynomial and if the roots lies in the open left half of that complex plane then the system is stable and another definition is you find the maximum degree of that polynomial so maximum degree is n so this n is called the order of that system because you have seen in last few classes i have used the term first order system, second order system. So basically that order means the maximum degree of the characteristic polynomial is one in case of first order system. In case of second order system, the degree is two. So let us just write these two important information that is stability of a system system means here that LTI system linear time invariant system because we are talking about the transfer function as we have discussed the transfer function is only applicable to linear time invariant system so it is only related to linear time invariant system stability of a system depends depends on the location on the location of the roots of the characteristic equation so that means the stability depends on the location of the roots and as i have just pointed out if the roots lie in the open left half of that complex plane then only it is stable and another one is the order of the system the order of the system is equal to degree of characteristic equation So, for example, here we can say that, okay, if we have first order, first order system, first order system, so that means characteristic equation, for example, it is say S plus 1 equal to 0. It is a for first order system. That means the transfer function of a first order system is suppose G S equal to 2 by S plus 1. Or say another one is a g2s equal to say s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 so this is actually strictly proper plant and this is proper by proper plant so from here you can see that the proper thing the proper or by proper means m equal to n and strictly proper means m less than n so in this case both of them both of them are first order system because the degree of the denominator polynomial is one but this is first order strictly proper plant and here this one is first order by proper plant and what is that second order second order system so second order system is a suppose g1 of course that is g1s g1s equal to suppose s plus 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 3 so here as the degree is 2 so that's why it is second order systems 
and here it is strictly proper because its order is one and its degree is two so basically two greater than one denominator degree is more than the numerator degree so that's why it is strictly proper second order plant so these all are the terminologies we will be using throughout this course and you should keep remembering all of those terms and terminologies so here what we have discussed that means we have discussed one important concept that is called the characteristic equation. The characteristic equation is uh, the denominator polynomial. Denominator polynomial, that means if you write a transfer function in this particular rational form, the denominator polynomial is equal to zero gives you the characteristic equation. It is called characteristic equation and I hope you can understand why the name characteristic is used. The reason is why the name characteristic is used. The reason is uh, the roots, the roots of this particular polynomial, the roots of this particular polynomial give you all the information that means it carries all the information of the dynamic systems and you can see the roots if they lie in the open uh, left half of that complex plane then the system is stable so the stability of that system is fully characterized by the roots of this equation as well as it gives you the information related to the all modes so those things I'll be discussing in detail later. That means how the roots of a characteristic equation give you all the information of the dynamical systems. And another thing we have discussed the degree, that is the order of that system. It depends on the degree of the characteristic equation. The degree of characteristic equation is called the order of that system. And we have just discussed some examples. So now let us see how to represent the transfer function matrix as I have pointed out here that means the transfer function whenever you will be writing you should be very careful about this particular representation because in case of multi input multi output system you know the input is a vector and output is also a vector so that means this GS is no longer a scalar rational function it is a transfer function matrix. So let us see in case of MIMO systems how we can represent it. So transfer function in abbreviated form I am writing that is TF of multi input multi output that is MIMO system. So let us see, uh, suppose if I take one multi input multi output system which has two outputs that is Y1S and Y2S, those are called channels and you have suppose two inputs, yes you may ask that whether the number of inputs and outputs should be same, no, you can take any number of inputs and any number of outputs. So you can take suppose here it is three inputs, two outputs. So if this is three in inputs, that is this vector is three cross one and two outputs, this vector is two cross one. So in this case, the dimension of this transfer function matrix would be two cross three. But in this particular example, just for better understanding, I am taking the simple case that you have two inputs is two inputs and two outputs. So if you have two inputs and two outputs, the transfer function matrix dimension is two cross two. And here you can see that this is a two cross two transfer function matrix and all the elements are transfer functions. So two one is and G22 S. So these all are actually transfer functions. For example, for example, say suppose 
you have y1 s y2 s here you can write that suppose this is s plus s plus 1 and it is a suppose constant gain and th this is a suppose 1 by s square plus 2s plus 3 and here this is s plus 2 by s square plus 5s plus 3. So you can see here that this is a transfer function matrix. It is a two cross two transfer function matrix and each one of them, each one of them here, this is a transfer function. So it is a static gate. That means in this case, you can see here G12 is 2, G11 is s by s plus 1 similarly g21 is this one and g22 is this one that means in case of multi input multi output system whenever you are writing a transfer function matrix so each element is a transfer function i hope from this particular example it is clear so now you just apply that matrix algebra and you can write it because all of them are in algebraic form so you can write that y1 is y1 is equal to g11 s so g11 is this one g11 is this one so this is actually one example i am writing it for general framework so g11 is into e1 s plus G12S into U2S. So that is G11S into U1S plus G12S U2S. So this is that first equation and the second algebraic equation you will get that is G21S U1S plus G22S into U2S. So now, if we represent these two equations in diagram form, later on you will see that this is called that block diagram. So what will you get? So here you have G11S and here you have G21S g21 is then you have g12 is and here you have g22 is so now you are applying that u1 s here you can see from here applying u1 s here so you will get one part of that output that is G11S into U1S. Now you have applied another input because you have two inputs. <coughs> Sorry. U2S. So U2S, you see U2S is coming that G12S into U2S. So G12S into U2S. So then here, if you take the sum of these two, sum of these two, then finally you will get Y1S. You can see it here that Y1S you will get if you take the sum of these responses. Similarly, you can see here Y2S. So Y2S 
you will get if you take the sum of this g21 s into u1s so g21s into u1s means so that means if you take the sum of this term and sum of sum of this term this term and the sum of so g22s into u2s so that means you take the sum of this this output and that output finally you will get that y2s so this is actually that multi input multi output system where you can see that the two outputs how they are related with the two inputs and particularly the analysis and design of multi input multi output system is difficult the reason is these two particular terms these are called coupling coupling terms so coupling why it is coupling because you can see that the output channel y2 this is one channel and this is another channel output channel so output channel depends on both this particular channel as well as this particular channel and output y2 depends on u1 that means channel 1 through this particular transfer function and in this case also you can see that y1 is depends on u2 through this particular transfer function so these two transfer function that is g12 and g21 they are actually the coupling terms and this is the representation of multi input multi output system and this is the transfer function of multi input multi output system and here we have explained it through block diagrams so let us uh, just uh, take one simple example how to find the transfer function so here if we take a simple circuit if we take a simple circuit that is output v0s and this is r and this is ls this is is so this is input v1s so we are interested in what would be the transfer function from input v1s to output v0s and in this case but you can see here whenever you have one inductor so suppose you have that inductor so current what is flowing that is is and you have apply that voltage that is okay so just write that this is it current it and voltage you have applied that is vt so now you can see here that vt equal to l di t dt so now if you take zero initial condition because we are interested in to find what is the transfer function so then that would be vs into ls into is so that means here this is the relationship input and output relationship so in this case particularly if you take input as vs and output as is don't then you will get that is by vs equal to 1 by ls and from here it is very much clear that this ls is actually that representation of that inductor impedance and then we can directly write the transfer function from input v1s to output v0s 
okay so this particular uh, transfer function derivation we will be doing in the next class so we can stop it here so today what we have discussed we have discussed that uh, what is the definition of transfer function and the different aspects of transfer functions and then we have seen the simple example of the transfer function and we have given some definition characteristic equation and order of that system and here we have taken some examples and we have shown how to represent transfer function for multi input multi output system and this particular example we will be discussing uh, in next class okay so uh, so thank you